I'm live. Hello, hello, everyone. There's the lights. Welcome. Welcome. It is Tuesday night, raw question and answer. So bring questions and we will do our best to answer them. Um, all things foundational health, which in um, my book is diet and um, body work, body health. Um, my name is Dr. Andy Harper. I am a doctor of chiropractic and I am a certified animal chiropractic chiropractor. I've been in practice and still in practice for the last 20 years. Um, none of this is veterinary medical advice. All of this is what I have learned um, from clients over the years and from my own animals. And pretty much um, what we talk about, I've either, I've generally tried with my animals. Um, and so that's what we talk about. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> so um, let's see. Let me see what I want to start with. And if anybody has a question, go ahead, pop that in the box and we'll get the ball rolling. Um, the questions are too small. We talked about um, last week um, uh, just pro tips on how to put all your raw meals together for your animals. And so that was fun. So nothing's really too small. Hi, Kyle. <laughs> Hi, Jessica. You know what I did forget to ask last week was about the Beagle's um, second appointment with their chiropractor and how that went. Um, I find generally they're actually a little more um, wiggly the second visit. I actually warn owners uh, that the first visit, they kind of sit there like, uh, what's going on? And then the second visit, they try to see what they can get away with, I guess is the best way to match that energy. Uh, but they tend to be a little more like, hmm, do I really want to do this? I don't really want to do this. Um, and then by the third or fourth visit, they fall into the routine. Generally speaking, the vast majority of dogs enjoy chiropractic work. Um, I, everybody asks, how do you get that done? And generally they're, they're pretty smart beings. Um, and they fall into the routine. They kind of, I, I wonder if they, now I am projecting, right? Like I'm putting human emotions on the animals. And, you know, I think that second visit, I wonder if they're like, okay, something else going to happen. And by the third, like, this is really all we're going to do. But by um, the third or fourth visit, they kind of settle in and generally really enjoy chiropractic work. Um, Jessica says, ha ha ha. Yes, that's what happened. Yeah, they just get a little more wiggly, a little more. And some dogs, it happens because they're actually feeling so much better that the next visit, they're like, I'm going to argue with you a little bit. Some of my old seniors, old seniors, that's kind of obvious, but, uh, my senior crowd, like the next visit, they're a little more spicy, like third, fourth visit, they're even spicier. I actually get excited by that because they feel so much better. They want to argue with me. And so, um, I actually like to see that in certain cases. Now, you know, a two-year-old mastiff that gets a little more spicy with me, you know, maybe, maybe not that excited about that, but you know, one sec. But my senior crowd, I do actually get excited about that. And I do pay attention to that with clients because if they come in really agitated, they may be, um, there we go. It's snowing here in Colorado. Um, it's actually supposed to snow a lot here in Colorado and I guess across the country. It is winter time, right? Um, there we go. A little more color. More black and gray and white. Anyway. So sometimes you, you do want to pay attention, you know, person, you know, personality wise, if they're agitated, if they're, you know, kind of down, if they're all of that. So clients that I've seen a lot of times that it becomes more telling. No snow in New Jersey, but you get your fair share over the winter. Um, good. I'm glad the Beagles had a good time. Are you guys going back or is it now as needed? I'm just being curious. Yeah, they were, she said they were definitely still more the first visit. Yeah, 
Okay, we're going back. Awesome. Ashley says Addie didn't eat this morning, so I have started to call her Ad the Chihuahua Meteorologist. Yes, I think I've talked about this here. No, I've talked about it with Dee Dee on the, the Raw Dog Food Truth podcast. Storm fronts do affect our animals, and they affect them differently. Um, maybe they don't feel so good, like sore-wise, but they choose not to eat. Um, some, oh no, the limp in the rear is back. Well, yeah, it might be sore because the storm front's moving in. I think generally speaking, they just kind of get poopy. They get kind of like, I don't want to do anything. Um, and that can just be because of the storm fronts moving through, especially in, well, mostly in the winter, right? The summer, and we've talked about this, it can be more, you know, thunder, lightning, rainstorms that become an issue with animals. Um, but do not discount the big storm fronts moving in with snow and such. And like here in Colorado, it could be storm fronts going through the mountains that don't necessarily impact us weather-wise that our animals are picking up on. So just keep that in mind when things change and shift. And, you know, some don't move, some don't eat, some, you know, maybe some get more agitated. Just all of these things are times where we get to know our animals better. Let's see, any questions out there in the world? Anything, anything burning? Any burning desires out there? Let's see, let's see, let's see, what? Oh, I have a question, okay. More about animal energy. <laughs> I can always talk about animal energy. Uh, but I have a question. Well, you have to give me a little, you got to narrow the topic a little bit. A little bit. Let's see. I had a client. Um, if so. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ashley. Our, our um, what is it? Public service announcement PSA, right? Um, I guess Zee Peak is currently having a buy one, get one on their air dried food, which is huge, actually. So the company's having it. So is that, okay, now you have to answer my questions, Ashley. Um, is that at all the stores? Like it's through Zee Peak? Because I need to know this. That is, um, I buy Zee Peak lamb and I, uh, use that, I put that in my pocket and I use that as treats with my, my clients. And it's honestly been the only thing that's been in my pocket for probably 15 years. Um, I have checked other foods. Um, I like their ingredients the best still. Um, it's expensive as you know what, and there's still so far nothing better on the market. And I can buy an eight pound bag and I go through quite a bit of treats. And I get the lamb because the lamb doesn't crumble into smithereens like the beef does. And it's one of the lesser expensive proteins, although they do have chicken now. And they have some more blends. They've got, sorry, my nose is itching, itching so bad today. I'm not sure why. I think it's super dry. Uh, maybe that's my storm front indicator too. Um, so if you haven't checked out Zee Wee Peak, um, and it is, they have treats, but just buy the damn kibble. It's not kibble. It's air-dried food. It's really not kibble. Um, it is resprayed with vitamins, um, but you can have it on hand. Um, if you do have a difficult eater, you can put it on top of stuff. You can use it as a kibble for meals here and there. Intermix with your raw if, if you really need to, if you're traveling. All of that jazz. Um, so it's one of my faves out there. Okay. Um Okay, she found it on their website, goes till January 23rd. The sale goes to January 23rd while supplies last. Okay. Um, we heard the podcast with my question about the rescues and me having trouble adopting since my dogs are not up to date on vaccines. <laughs> yeah, we talked about you. Didi always asked me what we talk about. So we talked about you there. Yeah, 
um, didn't have any more input. Uh, read their energies and what their feelings and experiencing. Uh, it's still a very big question, Kyle. Um, so then we get into the realm of animal communication, right? We'll go, we'll go I don't know how to, why is my computer making noises? Oh yeah, yeah, that never happens. Hang on. I don't know how to shut that off. Hopefully it won't continue. Uh, so now we're, we're like stepping, when I talk about energies, we, we, it, it may like overlap with like animal communication, right? And I don't know how many people here work with an animal communicator, but a lot of my clients do. There are some really good ones. And honestly, I think all of them have value. And I think the biggest value that they provide is essentially confirming what you already know about your animal. So just keep that in mind when you're, you know, even if you contact me or you contact an animal communicator or whatever title they, they use, essentially they're going to confirm what you already know about your animal. But most people are not confident in that, right? They think they know their animal. They think that they might get this. They think they pick up on it. And if you think it, you're getting it, all right? And so it's really a muscle that you just build. And you'll hear what I think is a general misconception. It's sometimes it's true that it's harder to communicate or read your own animal's energies. Sometimes that may be true with your particular animal. Um, I've had wonderful very clear communication with my own personal animals. Um, my little, and, it, and it's getting to know each animal and how they communicate and how you personally are picking up on the energies, on the communication. We can use those words interchangeable, at least in my world. How do you pick them up? Do you pick them up? Do you pick up pictures in your head? Do you get smells? Do you see words? Do you hear words? Do you just like have this core gut knowing about your animal? And that muscle, that core gut knowing, that um, gut awareness that, um, that you have about other things you can have about your animals. And when you have that, what if it's really important that you follow that for them? And what if that's their communicating? Um, Kyle asks, how do you project energy onto animals in a reciprocative way? All right. You're way too smart for me tonight, Kyle. Um, can you clarify? I'm sorry. I'm not getting it tonight. I really am blonde, really. Um, but if you can clarify that a little bit more for me, that would be awesome. Um, and then you can take classes, right, on animal communication. Uh and you can learn some of these tools. Again, communication energy, I, I think, is, is interchangeable. And it's interchangeable in my world. But then they will generally set down rules. Like, if you want to communicate, you have to send them a picture of what you want them to do. And, and they will send you a picture back. And this is how you have to do animal communication, which I think is general BS. I think we all do it differently. And the animals all do it differently with us. And so keep that in mind while you're building this muscle and playing with it. And the less serious you take it, like the more fun you have with it, the more fun with you have your, with your animals in general. Um, I think the more ease you'll have with getting it and building that muscle. Um, and I, I kind of, you know, when you're out walking the beagles, play with it. Ask them, do you want to go left or right? See what you get. See if you get a picture of the park that's on the right or a picture of a certain building that's on the left, whatever paths you're going to take. Or see if you hear the word or, or see the word or pick up an energy like right just seemed lighter, like that's the way they wanted to go. So 
play with it in very small chunks. Like how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? You can also play with, do you want turkey or beef? Because you have a choice of what meat you want to defrost, right? And see which one. If you got two beagles, it may seem like the same because one picked beef, one pe picked turkey. So, you know, start playing with asking each dog individually um, and just start building that. Um, and if you, you don't even have to do this out loud. If you come across dogs out in public, they happen to be in line um, at Home Depot and you don't have your dogs, you know, ask the dog a question. I don't know. Right. You start playing with it. Um, I just happen to have my hands on and interact with 10 at earlier in my career, 30 dogs in a day, almost every day of the year. That's a lot of practicing. And that's what also your animal communicators are doing. They're practicing. They've built that muscle day in and day out talking with animals. Um, trying to communicate in an energy type way, like I understand you and communicate back. Well, it's kind of like what I just went through is like the way I personally do it. And this is how I do it. It's a lot of, I know things and I do a lot of what I call light and heavy. Like if I have a choice for a dog, do you want beef or turkey? And I ask that particular dog, whatever is lighter, beef or turkey. All right. You want turkey today. Okay. I don't always have a choice. I, my animals don't always, sometimes they live in a no choice universe, which is my world. And since I get up, make all the money and pay for all the stuff, they kind of have to work within my world. Um, we could talk about that, that. So start with, you know, asking them if they want to go left or right on a walk and start just playing with the energy there, asking which meat, what toy do they want to play with? Um, where do they want to sit on the couch and just start seeing if you're, and if you're noticing anything, um, okay, we'll go left and go left and see if they seem happier. If they seem lighter themselves, they, you know, a little happier tail. I mean, like this is subtle, subtle stuff, subtle stuff. And animals in general are not used to dealing with people that ask them anything. Right. I mean, some come in and it takes a lot of time before um, we're communicating, whatever that is. If we're communicating about an adjustment or communicating about anything else, you know, some never get comfortable. But they, some are quite fascinated when people start asking them stuff. They're like, I got a say in this. That's pretty cool. Um, so... Jessica's doing her animal Reiki training, so I will do the animal communication course, too. Maybe I can learn more about my beagles. Can Kyle can do it with him. Yeah. Yeah. Take the courses. And, and what I think is really nice about the courses is usually there's other people with their own animals, right? And then we... This is what I understand some of the exercises to be. I've never actually gone through a course. Uh is they'll be, they'll bring, bring a picture of a dog, of a horse, whatever. And they'll have everyone tap in and then go around the room and see what everybody brought up. And what's really cool about that is some will bring up the emotional stuff. Some will bring up the physical stuff. Some will bring up this portion of what's going on. And then somebody else might bring up another part of whatever's going on. Because do not assume, these are my personal personal things. Animals will lie. <laughs> they will. I'm sorry. They will lie, especially cats. Cats actually have very, they use a lot of foul language. Cats are awesome. Um, and you may, you may get something completely different from the other person in class or another time, but maybe you got the second half of the conversation, right? Or maybe they wanted to tell you what happened um, six months ago, not right now. So you always get um, 
you can get just different parts of what's going on too. So I also don't think whatever anybody picks up from an animal is ever wrong. It just may not make sense to our linear brains. That's all. I don't think it's ever wrong. So play, play, play with it. Ashley said, John laughed when you asked, where do you want to sit on the couch? Our animals love to take his seat when he gets up just for the moment. They think it is so funny and warm. And so that's just their thing with him, right? And then the whole household enjoys that. And so they pick up on that, oh, we got a really fun reaction. So let's do that again. Maybe there was never a word. Maybe, you know, all Ashley did was look at John and kind of giggle, right? They pick up on that. So they, But they also do pick up on, just like little kids, the negative energy. Like dogs that jump up on people, right? Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. They still get a response, right? They got a reaction. So it's not like they're always going for a, po a labeled positive reaction. They're just going for a reaction. They're going for an energy. If the energy shifts, oh, cool, I got a, I got a reaction. I got a response. I got a shift in energy. Cool, I'm going to do that again. You know, maybe it's not what we deem positive. Um, I'm trying to, I, th I thought I had a... And not all animals are going to talk or communicate or share their energy very openly. Sometimes if you have a household or you even have like the two beagles, one might do all of the communicating or 80, 90% of it, and they'll do it for the other dog. Um, when I, I perp on point or intentioned and did more of this. Um, you know, if we, there's a household, oh gosh, try this. This is always fun. Trying to get one of the cats to turn in another cat in a household that maybe is being naughty, like not using the litter box generally does not happen. But if you have like a household of animals, sometimes I would even ask who wants to, who wants to talk today? Like who wants to, and usually it's the same one. Like my little Jack Russell, he doesn't have much to say, never has. Everything's just fine in this world. Everything's great. Um, he just, he's just never really had any reason to. Um, the poodles, on the other hand, both of them, it's ridiculous. Um and so it just really depends on what you have. And so if you're not getting anything, it's not that you're, again, doing it wrong or missing it. Some are just, everything's fine. We know people like that, right? And so, again, that's kind of projecting our, our humanness onto them. But everybody's got different personalities. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I find mostly that the, the girls take over too, right? <laughs> Just doesn't matter the species. There's always more of this, I don't, you know. Um, Kyle asks, why would a dog react in a negative, scared way when I'm pan frying something like onions or mushrooms? The sizzling seems to upset her. Well, they they are rescues, right? So we, there's a portion of um, their lives that you were not present for, right? Um, so you could at that, maybe at that time or, or later or, let me back up. I'm going to go back a few feet, a few steps. Next time you're going to do that, tell her. I'm going to go cook some onions and mushrooms over here or I'm going to fry some butter and whatever. It's going to make that noise. So you might want to just stay in the other room. Okay. Or I'm going to do this. You know, you might decide what you want to do with this, but give her a heads up um, and see what shifts and change just by giving her information that it's coming up. This is what we're doing next. Um, that seems to just kind of even things out. 
But who knows? I mean, that could have been what's going on on the stove. Somebody turned around in the kitchen, flipped the pan around, and she and it hit the floor, and she, and maybe she got sprayed when she was little. I mean, like, who knows? Now this, it's funny where this this going. Now, because that was the picture I got in my head. I then go, okay, that is what happened with her because that's what came in because she doesn't have to be on this YouTube live with us. They're tuned in. Um, they know as soon as I probably asked about their appointments, they were more present with us. Maybe even when you turned on the computer, cause they know what day and time it is. They don't, I couldn't tell you Tuesday at 6 PM, but they know the energy of, this is when mom and dad usually do this. Um, Ashley can contest to that. Um, she would she would listen to my podcasts and all her cats would or cat would show up and listen and it, they, they know things. They energetically know things. Yeah, Scout is sitting on her lap. Um, one of the other things that I pick up in, more in the physical world is if um, I'm having a conversation with a pet parent and it, it's, you know, about the dog or about a sizzling noise or about something like that. If we're talking and the animal is just, is agitated around the room and then decides to lay down, I know we're on the right track. If they're laying down and I ask a question or the owner goes somewhere and they get back up, and they start fidgeting around or going off track. So you can also use your physical cues in the world of, you know, if they're laying there listening quietly, um, generally you're on the right track. Um, if they're getting up, they're getting agitated, they're, they're starting to lick stuff, you're getting a little off track. Yes. <laughs> Scout does show up for my shows, but oh my gosh, she does not want to see me in person. Um, yeah, just warned you next time. We're going to do this. Um, see, this is where it gets, I, I'm super, I am super weird, is I, next step is how can we help you with this? What can we do differently? Don't concentrate on it. Go about your things in the kitchen and see what happens. Maybe she hates the smell of cooking onions. Like, you know, and maybe that will come to you. Like some other stuff might come to you. Because uh, us people like our linear. We love our linear, right? And if one plus one equals two every time. Well, bodies don't work that way. Energy doesn't work that way. Animals don't work that way. Like we're always trying to shove them into this linear box that they don't fit in. Right? Like speaking of animal and animal hair. Um, lately, the a theme of some of the conversations was I did everything right. Right? I did the holistic route. I fed the raw. I did all of this linear right stuff and my animal still got sick and died early or what I, what the person considers early. Um, it's very linear. If I do everything right, nothing bad will happen. That's not how it works. Um, and as soon as you go to, I do everything right, the universe will show you something else. Um, it's that polarity. And the more balanced you can be with everything, with how, do you start to worry about how June's going to react to cooking mushrooms and onions at four o'clock, but you weren't planning on doing dinner until 630. So you're actually already have it in your consciousness. You're already thinking about it. You're already worried about it. And so she's already getting worried about it because they live in our heads. That way, maybe at four o'clock, June, we're frying stuff tonight. So sorry about that. You know, what else can we do for you tonight? And just leave that as that. Just leave it as 
you said something, you got it out of your head. Maybe she got it out of her. Maybe it just shifts the whole energy of the thing. Kind of back to the same games that we, energy games that we talked about with walking along with, you know, the, the actual training piece that Ashley shared. Um, all that energy stuff. And see what shifts and changes. Preoccupied with the bone. Okay. Well, there you go. Kyle and Ashley can talk about that. Right? You know, can she do something else while that starts? So you've got the tools. And, and that's the other thing is even if you get the energy right on, it doesn't mean you get the bone worked or it kind of worked. Awesome. Let's do that again. Um, and that's the, that's the other thing humans love to do. People love to do is, okay, I'm going to try this. And again, we're going to go back to this will be the right thing to do. Like if we give her a bone, she will not worry about the cooking. Maybe, maybe not. If it's more of an easy, balanced energy of, let's try this. Right. And then, yeah. And, and Ashley gives you the practical. Right. We're going to do this. I'll give you this. Right. You know, maybe this, whatever you chose this time wasn't good enough. And she went, eh, you know, maybe you have to up the ante next time. Maybe the next time it will be good enough. Um, so, yeah. That that balanced energy. If you can be balanced. Hello, friend, Keisha. Welcome. Welcome to the party. Talking more energy with our animals. Um, what else? Where else do you want to go? What other rabbit hole do you want me to go down? Show you just how weird I am. Um, let's see. God, it's different for all of them. I know it is your kind of topic, Keisha. So let's see. Gizmo at 15, he gets, and Torch get over half tripe. So they each get 3.5 ounces and um, they get two ounces tripe. Crosby gets three of his eight. Riggs gets four of his 11. So it's high. What is that? 40, 35, 40%. And then the, and then Mo gets it because he's old and really hard poops. Torch gets it just for gut health. Uh, and it doesn't seem to affect his poop. Um, he's got great stool um, firmness. And then Molly Brown, she only eats 1.6 ounces and she gets five ounces of that, 0.5. So she's probably on the lowest end, about 30%. And then if the food has tripe in it, above that. So I, I'm currently doing a heavy tripe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, senior dogs, if needed, can eat 100% tripe diet. It's that nutrient dense. And I know some that have done really well on 100% tripe. Half their food, wait. Been doing it a while. They all seem good. <laughs> Very scientific I am. Very scientific. It depends on the, the blends. And yeah, that, I've been doing that quite a while. Yeah, and their poops are all good, and they look great, and they're not gassy, and not burpy, and um, you can certainly do um, fermented foods like sauerkraut, and I have in the past. Um, you know, I almost prefer dealing with tripe than sauerkraut in the mornings. 
I, that's just the smell of sauerkraut in the morning for me is super rough. Give me a chub of um, tripe, green tripe any day. That's just me. I'm a weirdo. Um, but yeah, you can do that if you'd like. You can do different fermented vegetables, you know, carrots if you make it, you know, other things. Um, yeah, anything fermented as far as I know. If they like them. And mine actually really do like the sauerkraut. They, they never left it in their bowl or anything. I have no how I I would just kind of put a glob. I can't say that I ever like figured out how much sauerkraut they should get if we're using it as a probiotic in their food. Okay, so there you go. You can use Adored Beast Felix Florida ferment goat's milk. I actually getting my hands on goat's milk is the harder part. There's actually um packets human packets that you can buy at your natural grocers that will ferment go, um, cow's milk or goat's milk into, into kefir. Kefir, however you want to say that. I'm just going to go with kefir. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's the bacteria, right? You need the bacteria to eat up the sugars that ferments your food, ferments your milk. Because bacteria like lactose. And so your goat's milk, Fermented goat's milk is going to have a lot less carbohydrates because the bacteria ate it. And then you get the benefits of all the good bacteria that grew in the product. That's cool. I wonder why they chose the Felix Flora, but that's a question for another time. Yeah. Yeah, because the cow kefir already had some of the bacteria, so you just fed it more. Yeah, and once you have like a starter, yeah, I forget what brand I have. I bought the box of packets, and you can just add more to it and add more to it. It was, okay, that, okay, she used it for a kitty. Um, that makes sense then. I don't think that's, yeah. That's really interesting. That was kind of brilliant for that person. That was kind of brilliant. I like that. I just, I haven't found a great place to get goat's milk. That's not really difficult to get, expensive, all of that. I mean, I could try a little harder, but right now I just buy answers. Goat's milk. It's still our favorite here. And it actually doesn't taste too bad. I have tried it. It is the best, like, the first day when it's still a little icy icy, and a little chunky. It's actually very good. It doesn't have much taste. Um, so I have done that. And I've been putting Adored Beast Healthy Gut on my avocado, sprinkling it on. It doesn't have any taste. So there you go. Yes, green juju. Yeah, I haven't. Um, who? They're. They're associated with Adored Beast, right? Green Juju? They're somehow associated with them, I believe. I could be wrong, but I believe they are. Yeah. I stick with answers. I like their ingredients. Um, a Primal has one out there. They put turmeric in it. Turmeric is fine, except then they put it in a plastic bottle. And it's probably fine if somebody came home and poured it into a glass container after it defrosted, because we don't want turmeric next to plastic, it will denature the plastic and then you'll be drinking nasty chemicals. So any kind of turmeric you do get, it needs to be taken out of plastic and put in the glass as soon as possible. Turmeric should always be stored in glass. So if you, if primal is the only one you can get, defrost it and then pour it into glass for storage. That it's probably, but then again, depending on how long before it's frozen, you know, you just don't know all the ins and outs. I'm sure it's probably been frozen. Goat's milk versus cow's milk. Why goat's milk? I don't, why not goat's milk? So I could ferment it myself, make it a ferment, make it a goat, goat's milk keeper. That's why I'm looking for goat's milk. It would be then fermented for the dogs. 
Yeah. I suppose. I think th there's, you know, I don't know why we just don't use, well, I'd still have to find raw cow's milk, which I, I think is probably easier to find raw goat's milk, honestly, at the moment, at least here in Colorado. I don't know. We could ferment raw cow's milk. That would be fine, too. You just can't, you can't ferment any of the pasteurized stuff in the store because the pasteurization already killed all the nu nutrition and all the bacteria in it. So there's nothing for it, it, it. There's nothing to grow in there. So we could be looking for raw cow's milk too. And I've done some, I think it's answers that has a, a cow's kefir. And I've done that too. Yeah, I think they are kefir grains. Yes. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah. I forget what brand. I did have some and I did do it and it worked just fine. So. Mm -hmm. And so that's just, you know, more probiotics, a different type of probiotics. Um, and actually it was Ashley that reminded me. Because sometimes I, I run out and I don't get any for a few weeks. It's just, you know, and then I get some and then I run, you know, I just, I, I rotate, rotate, mix and match. I just, you know, ebb and flow. And so I ran out of the goat's milk, didn't pick it back up. And I think it was Ashley that's, oh, that's because Torch went on his vacation. And so I didn't have the goat's milk around. That was fine. And we were taking a break. And then I didn't, once I added it back in, he was off of it for three, four weeks. Huge difference in him. He really does well with the fermented goat's milk in his food as another supply of probiotics and good, good gut building stuff. Everybody gets it. Some get more than others. Some I have to be more consistent with. Just depends. There you go. What else? What else, folks? Ah. Uh, Hey, Keisha and I were just talking about this. <laughs> Literally, was that? That was yesterday. Like, was that earlier today? No, that was yesterday. How often do I bathe my dogs? Well, the poodle goes in for grooming every six weeks. Torch gets bathed at that point. The Doberman, I think, had a bath maybe in the last two years. I've never bathed the cats. And Molly and Mo get a bath. Well, A, when anybody pees on them. Don't ask. And or, I don't know, every four to six months? Not a lot. And every time you bathe them, you do disrupt their biome, their skin biome. So the skin also has a biome. Ears have a biome, gut, skin, like everything has a little biome. And drives me up a wall when... The vets are dealing with um, staph on the skin. Shall we talk about staph on the skin? Uh, usually senior dogs, usually. Um, those with really thick coats, the ones that generally come to mine are golden retrievers. So, A, get their thyroid tested. It can also indicate low thyroid. Okay. Two, when your vet says, wash them with this medicated shampoo once a week, you are destroying their biome. You will never be able to get the biome back to where it was prior to the staph infection, which by the way, is not a staph infection. You, we all have staph on our skin. I have staph all over me right now. The animals have staph all over them right now. It's when it gets out of balance and that staph becomes pathogenic or it gets out of balance and one strain of staph, there are many, many many different strains of staph and the pathogenic staph gets out of balance that then you have flaky, itchy skin, a patch of it, however it presents. Some dogs get one patch, some get it all over, some it's only on their belly. It just kind of depends. Okay. 
But once you start bathing with the medicated shampoo every week, it is almost impossible. Plus, they usually do antibiotics internally, which then destroys the gut biome that is responsible for supporting the skin biome. Mm. So, of course, foundational health, are they feeding raw? Most generally, gosh. You know what? I don't think I've come across a raw fed dog, no matter the age, with a staph infection, skin infection. I could be wrong, but recent memory, that doesn't usually happen. So we're also talking, you know, a hard, usually a higher carb diet that's contributing. Change the food. Um, the colloidal silver sole from Adored Beast may be a really nice thing now that we have it, just to spray on that to um, attract the pathogenic bacteria, kill them, and allow the good bacteria to grow and repopulate and balance out that biome again. Uh, and generally, uh, shave the area, get some air to it, get some air to the area. And if that, if, and this is just, if this was my animal, that's what I would do. And I would probably just see how that goes. Um, you can do a scraping, you can get a real diagnosis, you know, conventional vet medicine is really proud of telling you what you have. Um, they really like that. They think they've done a good job then, um, even if they can't really help you beyond telling you what it is. Um, and so I might do some research, see what homeopathics might be helpful to support the skin, um, that kind of thing. That's what would come to mind. Um, I have not personally dealt with that. So we have, if you're feeding raw, you don't have a generally stinky dog. I, you know, wash it as minimally as possible. My point of view. Uh, so is it, Kyle, is that cow kefir pasteurized at all? Because I, I don't think we can sell non-pasteurized stuff here in Colorado. That's why I ask. Um, yeah, with the raw food, you barely have to bathe them. I have my cats. You, you barely bathe cats anyway. Like that, I remember my first cat when I was like 12 and we would try to bathe him like twice a year. <laughs> You know, there's howling and blood and claws and wool. I mean, I these cats will be 10 this year, 9 this year, and I've never given them a bath. And they have never smelled anything but nothing. Like, it's amazing. It's amazing. So um, that dog smell, the grease, that underlying yeasty kind of stuff stench that maybe we grew up with is due to the kibble and the, and the poor digestion of it. And then it's coming out the skin. Yeah. You may never give him, need to give him a bath. The Doberman, I think he is seven. I think he's may have had four baths. He also doesn't have any hair and or fur. And that's a whole nother story. <laughs> but yeah, my dogs don't smell. And the poodle wouldn't get bathed that much, except he's got to be groomed that much. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, they're, they're probably getting less of a benefit because it's not raw, but there there's, and they love it and it agrees with them and they're getting, they're going to get something out of it. So that's awesome. I mean, yeah, I think that's great. Yeah. So remember the skin has a biome too. That was my little soapbox on that. Um, and, and, and hot spots don't necessarily have to be a staph infection. Um, a lot of times they go hand in hand, but they don't have to be. Some dogs just get hot spots. And I say they just get you don't just get, but a lot of them are, you know, your Goldens, your Noofs, your St. Bernard's, you know, a lot of hair, 
Um, generally, it is diet related, like I just went through. Um, I also knew a new f- mom was super staunch about very minimal vaccines, very, very minimal vaccines. And she got talked into, and the dog had a propensity and she was raw fed for hot spots already. And then mom, I forget why, I think it was the repro that talked her into doing a rabies and that poor dog, her hot spots like became so frequent, like back to back to back to back to back. And so it was related to that. And are the hot spots just because it gets super itchy in an area and they've got to pick at it? I mean, I, there's lots of theories and I'm not even schooled or up on all the theories of hot spots. Um, I do sometimes think, and I've come across like the ones that are down along the spine, that is muscular, skeletal, and chiropractic related because they're having pain, numbness in an area. Um, but some are in random, you know, sometimes over the hips, they'll be on the hips. That would be get them adjusted. Let's see if we shift it with that. But then sometimes they're just on their sides, right? There, there's not really a joint or anything there. So, um, but pay attention to where they're located. Pay attention to the areas they keep going back to. Like if they always get a hot spot in spring in this spot. Okay, Kyle, here you go. So cells have memory. So do the cells go back to, oh, every spring we do this. But our brains also go back to every spring my dog does this. And so it kind of interwines and energetically like, oh, she's going to get her hot spot soon, right? How about that person that always gets bronchitis in January? I get bronchitis in January. Of course, you're going to get bronchitis in January. You just said you're going to. So of course, you're going to create that, you know, manifest that. And so same thing with your animals. Oh, they always do this at this time. Well, they're going to do it again. And so there's, you know, looking at that, uh, you know, finding maybe some energetic clearings out in the world, some Reiki to change it, um, all kinds of different things to possibly change that. But don't forget that cells have memory. And then we're thinking about, and I actually go through this with little Miss Molly Brown because she gets itchy every summer. And I tell people all the time she gets itchy every summer. So how much am I holding that and creating that and um, actualizing that and manifesting that to occur? And I've been working on it. <laughs> been working on it. So just keep that in mind. Um, curious to try the wolf by Adored Beast. I have the I have the wolf. Um, there, there's trainings on the Adored Beast Apothecary YouTube channel by Julianne Lee. So she, of course, is, does a better job explaining all of this, but it is fascinating um, when she describes the wolf and then she describes the sea and soil. And so the wolf, this is brief, very brief, um, and then we're going to get out of here. The wolf, she actually cultivated the probiotic strains from actual wolf poop up in northern Canada. How fucking cool is that? Like, who does that? Who spends the time? Um, and so her thought process is these probiotics have like ancient DNA that matches our dog's DNA. Okay. Um, and so, and it has as its prebiotic turkey tail mushroom. The turkey tail is not at a therapeutic level, but you're getting some benefits of the mushroom for the immune system, and that's the prebiotic. So that's what the the back the um, yeah the bacteria munch on to feed themselves to grow um, to populate the good bacteria in the gut, the probiotics or the post the postbiotics technically, right? Because the 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 pre I can do this, right? I can do this. Prebiotics post. Probiotics make the post postbiotics. There we go. Okay, we're done with that. Um, and then the sea and soil uh, is literally um, bacteria from a, probably the area where she lives because she lives on a farm um, on the coast in Canada. I don't know where. I don't even know which coast, honestly. 
And then they use chlorella as the prebiotic in that, which is a very nutrient dense algae or algae, as they say. Um, <laughs> so I, and as soon as she said sea and soil, I'm like, oh, that's what Torch needs. Um, and we, I have both of them and I rotate them and Torch with his EPI does so much better with the sea and soil right now, currently. Um, it, 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 because it's a soil and it's their soil probiotic line. So they have what four, right? You have the wolf, the sea and soil that comes from the soil, and then they have phytos and then healthy gut has, I think, a strain of something in it too. Um, but they're all different. And so, and they are meant to be rotated. Um, the other dogs seem to like the wolf. Um, but darn torch does so much better with the chlorella. I think it's the protein profile of that. Um, and then I do actually a th therapeutic dose of turkey tail with him still to keep his immune system up since we're struggling with a gut thing. So yeah, get some of the wolf. I mean, that's just insane. It's just so cool. That's a great question. Is there human grade probiotics as good as dog probiotics? I don't know if there's anything human that is as good as what is adored beast is putting out there for dogs. Now, the question actually is, should they be the same? Like for years and years, I just sent people to, you know, Whole Foods, natural grocers, whatever you got. And I'm like, just go buy some people probiotics, open up the capsule and sprinkle it on. And it helped. It helped a lot. And it's always going to help better than yogurt. Don't, there's not enough in yogurt, even if it's plain yogurt. <laughs> there's just not enough. And if they enjoy it and you want to throw a dollop in, that's fine. But for therapeutic levels, you know, everyone's like, oh, I got them on yogurt. I'm like, eh, okay. Um, not enough. If you actually have something that you are quote unquote treating with it, it's just not enough. And these dogs did better, right? They did better on the human probiotics. But now we have the wolf. We have different lines that have these soil probiotics. We have, I think, a lot more research showing what dogs need versus what people need. And I couldn't tell you how much overlap there is. And I, I am not well versed in people probiotics. Um, I think I've mentioned, it's just not something I've actually done a lot with my animals is I've been playing a lot more with probiotics from adored beasts than I have ever before. And I don't play in that world for me. Um, I did try a brand recently that was just parts, like literally like just parts of probiotics. So the body could like not overreact. I think a lot of times when people use probiotics and it may happen to the dogs too, I don't know that you have more upset. The gut gets very unhappy and you're changing too much too fast with it. Like you already have a bacterial overgrowth and most of it is pathogenic. Some of it's good and you already have all this stuff going on and then you throw in more bacteria and the, the people gut just, you know, crashes and burns. And so that was interesting. That product, which I really, it was like fragments. It was very interesting. I, I It's called Healthy Gut. I think it's healthygut.com, honestly. That may be it, it. I know it's the same thing that Julianne called one of her products, but I think it's healthygut.com. And it's got people products. I did not try it with my animals, um, but it actually was like the first probiotic type product or probiotic that I took that didn't bother me. So um, I'm sure there's just as good people grade probiotics out there as the ones that we have access to for the dogs with adored beast. Um, I'm just not that familiar with them. I took a CE class or a class a few years ago and it was the study that he quoted. It was abysmal as to how poorly any of like the probiotics off the shelf help people. 
like they just don't even make it through the stomach most of the time. And I know that's one thing Julianne really looked at was did her probiotics get through the stomach? Because that stomach acid can kill a lot of it too. So a lot of people are buying them and taking them and they're not doing any good because they're just all dying in the stomach. So those are my two cents on that, Kyle. That hour went fast. Anything else, folks? Anything else? It was awesome. Covered lots. All right. Well, then we're going to call it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I well, and Dee Dee, Kyle, Dee Dee and I talked about like the shot that, actually, I have it here. I wrote it down. Excuse me. Nice shot of my face there. Okay. So the shot that everybody at Adored Beast takes, all the people take, is two teaspoons gut soothe, two droppers of the liver tonic, and one scoop of the Phytosynergy. But I'm not sticking that in orange juice. I'm not doing a shot of fructose into my system. So I'm like, what else can we put it in? Um, I think the gut soothe and the liver tonic... I'll try in my coffee. I know the healthy gut doesn't taste like anything because that goes on my avocado. That's fine. But that phytosynergy, I tried a little bit on the avocado. That is the worst tasting fish stuff I can say. It, it's it's potent. It, it tastes, it's very, very fishy. Um, as it should be. So I'm not sure what, I guess we could sit there and put them in capsules for ourselves, right? Um, just a thought. Like I have that much time in my day. Anyway, I digress. So I do have um, a quick announcement. Neely is going to be covering for me on January 31st. So someone will be here. We'll be 6 p.m. Um, on this on this YouTube channel, Dr. Andy's World. So Neely will be covering on the 31st. I'm still here next week, so you can't get rid of me that fast. And so we got that going on. Emails are still coming out weekly. If you want to get on the email list, head over to animalmagiccare.com. It's on the homepage. Um, you can pop in your email and you get the emails. Today was not very exciting. Um, I have a whole project for tomorrow on my snow day, and there'll be actual content coming out on Thursday for those of you that um, get the emails. She so, you knows talking about cats. Good. I mean, I adore cats, but... They're, they're strange little critters when it comes to stuff. So awesome. Yeah. Ask Neely all your cat questions. Get them out of, get them out of your system. Okay. Um, and, and she'll handle that. And you got to ask her about homeopathy. She's brilliant at homeopathy. Okay. So ask her for different things, what homeop homeopathy she'd recommend. Um, thank you, Ashley, Keisha, Kyle, Jessica, the usual crew. And then anybody that's been listening in or watching this in the future. I'm um, so grateful for you all. Um, let's continue down our journeys of foundational health with raw um, species appropriate diets for our animals. I'm on. All right. I will see you next week. Until then, how much fun can you have with your animals? Just fun. Just play and be grateful. Bye, y'all.